some angles to the framework. The brand's four-ringed logo sits on the hood, no longer the grill, and the full LED headlights create a quasi-angry expression of jagged light bands. Not to be confused with jagged light band, which plays Thursdays at Jimmy's. Overall dimensions shrink a tad versus the second gen TT, though the wheelbase gains a significant 1.4 inches. 18 inch alloy wheels and dual tail pipes are standard. The TDS adds quad pipes and some unique bumper work, all tasteful, fortunately. At least for now, there is no TDS Roadster, which the prior gen TT offered. Interior Minimalism overtakes the interior which packages all multimedia into a massive instrument display in place of traditional gauges. We'll detail that in the next section. What's left is an asymmetric expanse of wraparound materials and tucked away controls. It's a stark contrast to the layered dashboards overtaking the industry, see Lexus, for better or worse. Materials are impressive and consistent, with generous padding wherever your arms or knees end up including the doors, an area Audi often gives the short shrift. The optional S Sport seats, standard on the TDS, have tight side bolsters that aren't for everyone. Non-sport seats with leather and Alcantara simulated suede upholstery are standard, as are power adjusters and seat heaters. Full leather is optional. The cabin is tight, but Audi makes good use of the space. The front seats have lengthy adjustment range, and the low center tunnel opens up more inboard knee room than in some cars twice this size. The rear seats, however, are barely fit for children, let alone adults, and they lack head restraints. Toddlers will need high back booster seats to protect against whiplash. The TT Roadster does away with the back seat altogether. Ergonomics and Electronics Audi's standard virtual cockpit throws all functions, from audio to navigation, onto a 12.3-inch instrument display ahead of the steering wheel. It takes some getting used to, and it's certainly not friendly for passengers. Drivers can accomplish most functions through the steering wheel controls or Audi's console-mounted MMI controller. I experienced a moderate learning curve, but another editor found the setup a cinch. It's not the first time an automaker has thrown most of a car's multimedia into the gauges. The erstwhile Chrysler Pacifica housed its navigation system within the speedometer, and that was nearly a decade ago. But Audi's kitchen sink philosophy is unique, complete with a virtual tachometer and speedometer that you can minimize, though they're still visible, to open up the space for a larger navigation map or another menu. As such, the map itself can span massive proportions with scrolling and zooming via a finger pad on the MMI knob. It's a rich format, though the map could use a few more street labels and faster menu transitions. The layout has physical limitations. You have to position the steering wheel higher than you might like to avoid obstructing the screen with the rim. Audi also throws the optional backup camera in there, so if you turn the wheel to back around a corner, the wheel spokes themselves can become an obstruction. The virtual cockpit is standard, as are Bluetooth phone and audio streaming, plus HD and satellite radio. The navigation system and Audi Connect, which includes an in-car, subscription-based 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, are optional.